We're here in Boulder City, Nevada, and we're on our way to go visit Tom Devlin. I'll uh, introduce you to Tom, and I'll introduce you to some of the makeup crew as well. Hey, I'm Danny Draven, and welcome to my second vidcast. This time we're on location in Boulder City, Nevada, and I'm here with my good friend and awesome makeup effects artist, Tom Devlin. And we're here at Tom Devlin's Monster Museum, and also th this is also the home of Tom's 1313 effects makeup shop, and that is where Tom is creating all of the Ouija characters and all the special makeup effects for my new movie, Halloween Night, Meet the Ouija's. So Tom is going to take us into the effect shop and show us what him and his crew are up to. Wow, we're here at Tom Devlin's 1313 effect shop. Tom Devlin and I go back a long way. Long time, man. Long, long way. We worked on, uh, what was it, Real Evil together? Real Evil together. So we've been uh, hard at work on this Halloween night, meet the Ouija's. This is Jeff, Miranda, and Waleed. And uh, looks like they're working on the IMEX for our, our characters. Uh, we're working on a 360 servo system here so basically when uh, wh whomever is using the remote or whatever the eyes will continuously move unless they're directing it yeah, yeah. absolutely Very so what that means is our Ouija's are going to have what kind of eyes servo eyes Ser servo have, have, animatronic have, and we haven't eyes. seen that yeah. since when like the 80s yeah <laughs> right hey, there you go okay something new in the full moon universe all right and Miranda's building Miranda some systems out? here so she's got the servos out she's she's working with some eyeballs We're gonna build them put them together yeah and then you turn out and then this is what, so we, what, ones. We, what we end up getting there we go what does it look like with your glasses Ooh, we got we got a, a Ouija that we have the glasses with the Ouija perfect awesome yeah, All right. so those, those will go in the heads of our three puppet Ouija's and then uh, we also will be using uh, servo based eyes in top of our uh, mechanical appliances for our Weed Wolf, which is super cool and I don't know if we've seen that, I mean we're talking like, this is Empire days. For this Weed is, Wolf, yeah. Weed Wolf, Weed Wolf is, is going to be a, a little person in a, in a full on costume. An awesome performer, uh, he's small and very thin and he'll he'll look like the weed wolf but uh danny had a very uh valid point that we don't want to use human eyes underneath there because all of our other ouija's will have these sweet mechanical eyes um no, right. they're all blue right now none of them will be blue they'll be painted like like ouija eyes right and so we want uh weed wolves to match so we're building that into a mechanical appliance and we'll be able to get him on rc as well as as the puppets so they'll all look good and, and once he's hunched over and running around it this is gonna be cool it's gonna be very cool and they, and this is all you got this whole effects team in here working on this stuff night and day look everybody's sweating and yeah, dirty shop, and man. like paints on their shirts i mean look <laughs> at this everybody's this is great isn't it all right so there's more people believe it or not working in this shop besides these three so tom yeah we go got a, a couple other guys we got working. chris and robert back here and they're they're getting ready to mold the the ganja ghost so, so here we have guys? Chris and we got Robert yeah, guys. and uh, they're working on Ganja Ghost. Just finishing up texture here, talking to Robert about how we're going to mold this. Yeah, it's going to be nice and easy, a two-piece mold and I think we're going to use uh, Ultracal, it's going to be great. Perfect. We're going to awesome. end up running Ganja Ghost in foam latex so he's got that Crypt Keeper feel, you know, and uh, he'll move really well. Uh, the crazy thing is, so here at Full Moon, we don't really get the time limits are, are constrained. So, but Ganja Ghost has not been cast yet. Yeah. So we are jumping ahead on it and, and doing the best work we can, but we might have to redo all of this because yeah. if we end up casting somebody that this isn't gonna fit on, I mean, then, then we start back at, at, at square one. It looks great. It's got a little Yoda ears on it. Yeah. And this is, a, <laughs> this is a, this Ganja Ghost is, in the movie, he is going to be a, Sort of a floating head, if you will. Um, It'll be translucent with some yeah. uh, special effects to make him look like a right. ghost. Right. I mean, there's a. This is a little drawing that they had up of it. I mean, it, it's going to vary, of course. But, and he talks like a Rastafarian Yoda. Yeah. So he's got these little Yoda, kind of like little Yoda ears and a little. And all the Ouija's kind of had those Yoda ears. It's kind yeah, of what kind their, of like, their species has yeah. that that pointy yeah, kind of like, Yoda. If Yoda, maybe some of his seed made it out of the Star Wars universe into the full into, into, <laughs> into the weed universe and then created green, these man. like the, the so maybe, you know like his DNA or something kind of made him a little I don't know maybe that I don't know guys moving forward Tom still has a lot of work to do Tom and his team they're still building the Ouija's and that's going to take 
man. We got I, I'll weeks, be, months, years. I'm gonna do it. As We're quick. shooting in June. Yeah, it, they're gonna be done by June 10th. I can <laughs> tell you that. Yeah, they're, be, they're gonna be done, <laughs> by, gonna June be done by June 10th. And, and Tom has never missed a deadline ever. That's so not what I do. He, he's not what he does. So yeah. if, if if I came in here and it was two days to shoot and they had no Ouija's, we'd have would, them on June. 10th. It would have we would have them yeah. on June 10th. So Tom and his team are also gonna have to do all the um, special effects and makeup, all the uh, all the, the death deaths, scenes in the movie, it, and mean, we want it. We want it gory. Yeah, so. it tear, we like gory. They tear up, and yeah. they, these guys have cool little claws and teeth. And right. actually, the funnest part of making, uh, besides the creature part of it, is the gore part of it. Yeah. And especially for somebody um, with my background and Tom's background, having made a lot of bloody, gory yeah. movies, um, usually when the gore starts flying and the blood starts flying, and everybody the on legs set starts gets flying. that. It's, honestly, it's fun, you know. It's, it, it takes it takes that edge of everybody being so stressed and so worried, and then you start spraying blood, and people are laughing and slip yeah. in and and kind of it gets irritating to me because it's my job and I wanted to get hey did we get the shot did we get that but, I got blue. Yeah. but did we get the shot are we done you know and that I, I gotta calm that down sometimes I get a little bit yeah people get a little strangely yeah. eroticized by it I think and it's, it's, it's little, weird it's man disturbing. they love it as soon as the blood syringes come out yeah, everybody on set is is there something wrong like, with them psychologically yeah, yeah. I think, man. But for a horror film, <laughs> it ups the it ups the morale. And no, fun. it's good. No, everybody has fun when the blood starts flying yeah. for sure. And we're gonna we we definitely want a lot of blood in this movie. And then they all disappear so. when it's time to clean it up. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do. Well, when we were shooting Real Evil, we we blasted a whole bunch of blood all over the yeah, wall. Yeah, the blood came. And and we literally just left it on the ground. So Linda Vista. Linda Vista. <laughs> the next the next people that are walking through there, it literally looked like a murder just yeah. happened there. And if you didn't know we were shooting movies in the place, you would just you would have come across literally a bloodbath everywhere. The blood that I use will, and I stand by this full heartedly, will never stain right. anything. I mean, you put on white silk, it'll wash out. That's the good. problem is. Is having the people to clean it up because we yeah. gotta keep making the movie. Yeah, we gotta keep making the movie. And, and yeah. a lot of uh, the everybody's like, oh, effects guys, effects guys, yeah. clean this blood. I'm like, effects guys gotta do some effects. Yeah, no, so, I'm, uh, yeah, it's like, get it's some like, PAs in yeah, there. Yeah, because as soon as I say cut, I'm on to the next yeah, scene. Yeah, we I'm, gotta go. I'm not cleaning shit up. Right. I'm like, cut, let's move on. I'm not, I'm not washing windows or, yeah, housekeeping. <laughs> they could just leave it and get some PAs yeah. or something. That's what PAs are for. That's what PAs are for. PAs so we're looking for local Vegas PAs that are willing to swab up some blood. Yeah, yeah, everybody, they always wanna work on the film. They're like, hey, Help. I'll get you a utility belt with some shaving cream and Dawn dish soap. You're golden. Okay, so I'm here with Tom Devlin, and we're outside of the very hot sweatshop on the other side, and we're in a nice air-conditioned, cool area here where Tom has one of the Ouija's on display over here. He's been working on for a while, and I'll let him tell you a little bit about what he's been doing. So this guy here, this is Gravestoned, and, and he's the first Ouija that... Uh, that we started working out and uh, we had some great concept art to start with and I've just added my own flair and that taste and we've been talking rubber monster ghoulies since we started you know and uh, that's what we're kind of getting back to here so this will be a fully uh, automated puppet where where he'll have both hand hand controls as well as like we were saying before the RC eyes and uh, rods for arms and stuff and and he'll be uh, tearing some stuff up so each character uh, that we make, like Gravestone, will have four actual copies of him. One will be almost like a Nerf football. You'll be able to smash it, beat it, throw it, slam it in a door. You'll never be able to hurt it. Make love to it. Yeah. One will have the mechanical eyes and, and the acrylic teeth, and that's what we call our heroes. So the, the hero is for any close-ups, any kind of... These guys don't have real dialogue, but they're... You know, so so we'll have a lot of that uh, movement, and that's where the puppeteering comes in. The the crazy thing is, is it takes a long time to actually pull it together and, and get it going. But uh, once we find the look and we make the molds, we're not done. We need at least you know there's there's variants that we have to make stunt puppets and and mechanical puppets and the the ones that can get kicked across the room. Um, we have to we have to make certain things like uh, there might be a half body one that, that is peering out of a, a spot where we don't have room to to maneuver it the right way. So there, once the molds are done, there's still tons of work to do to get to the end product of, of our different. Uh, puppets for different uses. You now, know? Tom, what about painting? Like, how, at what point are you going to start adding the paint and the fur? And, and that, the, and so that is the last step. It's, it's kind of like a car. It's like auto body work. So basically we do all of the filler first. Uh, we make the molds. We run the pieces. We trim them, seam them, patch them. 
uh, make sure they're mechanically sound, and then that's when you come two days before we shoot, and I still gotta paint them. <laughs> yeah. So one of the really unique things about the Ouija's is that they're a little bit bigger than the normal puppet. Um, this, this one in particular is 22 inches high. So it, and it's got a lot of girth to it, so it's a. Uh, it, he's it's got a, a good. He's got, got a good belly, belly on him. He's got a nice hunchback on yeah. him, and and I put his shoulders way up high, so he's got that kind of trollish look. And, yeah. You know, I just wanted to make him give that reminiscence to the '80s rubber monster, but also add a little bit of fine detail that we can, you know, call our own. Tom and I are both really big fans of '80s horror, especially uh, the early John Buechler movies like The Ghoulies and Troll and all that stuff. And I think that was a big influence uh, uh, for for these guys. In my case, I've always wanted to direct a movie with those type of creatures in it. And I know Tom. I've always wanted to make a movie with little rubber monsters. I mean, and I can't tell you how many times I've been set up for it, and then. Either they go digital or they lose them all together or whatever it is. Or we end up doing practical makeups because it's just more cost effective. And, and, and we need to bring the 80s back. Yeah, the Deadly the 10 back. could be the beginning, you know, of, of a new of a new uh, era. You know? That's what's cool about the, the Ouija creatures is that um, when this movie spawns multiple, multiple, multiple sequels, it opens gonna, a universe. You know, there's a universe that these guys can continue on and on and we can keep bringing you really cool monster after monster after monster. Um, and it would also be very interesting to see like the, the whole idea behind these little guys, if I'm allowed to give it away right now, no, give it away. is, is uh, if you don't escape these guys and you get sucked into that board, you become a Ouija. It's very little monsters like. Right. And uh, as if, but the neat thing is, is we in the future, we might see uh, Gravestone's story. You know, we might see mm -hmm. him not win the battle, you yeah, know, sure. and, and right. that could be cool. So. To, to develop these guys with a little bit of uh, where they came from and, and have a nice concept and backstory for each one is is a really neat way to go forward because in the future this guy might get his own movie you know we don't yeah. know I can make a pretty cool movie with just one of these guys but what's so exciting about get this four. film is we get four and that's just the Ouija guys and then we have lots of gore and we got a, another ghost character and there's the this board movie. itself it's is the a board, character yeah, and the board itself the yeah. Ouija board itself in the movie is a character and it's not your average little Ouija board and this board is being custom made custom designed and it's very intricate the way it lights up it, it reminds me a lot smoke. of it's like really cool. the Pandora's box from yeah Hellraiser. yeah like yeah. a Pandora's box yeah. from Hellraiser yeah exactly oh. so that's very much a character in the movie uh, uh, that these guys come out of so I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't wait to get my hand up the back of this dude and, and wreak havoc in the hotel. <laughs> I think it'd be great. Yeah. So you can't wait to get your hand up the backside of one of these Ouija's? All three of them. All three of them? Yeah, you and everyone in Hollywood. When this guy's finished, he'll have acrylic teeth, he'll have the movable eyes, he'll be running all over. The collectibles that'll come out of this movie through Full Moon are going to be awesome. Ouija! Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, I'm just so stoked to, to bring these guys to life, and I think this movie's gonna be awesome. Just imagine this little guy wreaking habit with, with you know, his friends all over a hotel in Las Vegas on Halloween night. I mean, it, for me, that's gonna be such a fun movie to make. And I know for the effects guys, it's gonna be a really fun movie as well uh, on set and certainly at the creature shop to make these little guys. So stay tuned, there's gonna be a lot more coming from Full Moon and from the Deadly10.com. So sign up if you haven't signed up already. It's free, guys. It's free. All of the stuff that we're talking about right now is totally free. So keep going to the website. Tell your friends to sign up. You've got to tune in for the live streaming of this movie. Every single day, 10 hours a day, you're going to be able to see how we make these films. It's like free film school.